Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Brenda Miller from Stampin' with Brenda. And uh, tonight we are doing our paper pumpkin class. Um, and so we're going to make one of each project. And we're working with the December kit from 2023 called All the Best. And let me, uh, so I don't confuse everybody, let me go ahead and just spotlight the desktop. There we go. Have a bunch of people on. And uh, I, I guess Sheila's. Gosh, she'll come back, I hope. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started with our class. I love this kit. So here we go. All the best kit. And look at the beautiful cards we're making. And these, these, these photos don't do it justice. Absolutely not. They are just stunning. So, yeah. Sheila, if you want to put us on mute, that would be good. Just so that... No. No need. I'm here, you guys. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> he can hear us. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our box. And of course, it had some um, fluffy paper, but I took that away because I made one of each of these already. But it starts with this great little stamp set. I love that we have a thousand good luck wishes. What a nice sentiment to go with daisies. I'm sorry, not daisies, dandelions. Um, and then hello friend and wishing you all the best. And I foresee using this little stamp set a lot just to make quick little note cards. Um, I just think it's very versatile, great to add to our collection. We also have a pebbled path um, little ink spot. This is great because this is one of the in colors from 2023 to 2025. So those of you who uh, haven't invested in those yet, now you have pebbled path. So I'm going to put mine aside because I use my big pad because I do have them. And then next we have one of my favorite things, of course, is the bling. The bling is in the special, in the little package with the, your dimensionals and a couple of little glue dot things. Um, but look at these. These are, I don't know if you can tell online if you don't have them in front of you, but they are tinted blue, just a very pale blue. And they're just really nice. So you know me, all about the bling. And they gave us some um, um, tear and tape, which of course, you know, I hoard. So I don't know about you, but I'm gonna use regular adhesive tonight. I'll show you that it it, it, it works just as effectively as this, but um, yeah, tear and tape is the best. So I save it for, you know, special projects, right? So here we go. Let's open up our package and we are going to divide it out as we go into the three different projects. I'm just gonna move my box. We go. So first we have these stunning envelopes. What a great way to send the cards. And for those of you who like to extend your kit, you can cut these apart and use the pieces. Um, you know, this can be used as a card front down here. This can be used as an accent, the top part, but um, we're going to use them just as they are today. But uh, love, love, love having fun envelopes. And then we have our card bases. So there are three card bases that have um, the little uh, dandelions at the bottom. And that, that card base is with card number one. So go ahead and take one of those and put them into a pile for card number one. And here's my pile up here. Okay, take the rest and put them aside. I only have one left because I already made one of each. Then we have these lovely labels. We only need one of them. And that also goes with card number one. I love that they're gold edged. And I didn't point out, but look at our little dandelions, the little flower, the other little flowers beside the dandelions are gold. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I just really, really love this cake. Have I said that? Okay, we can put the rest aside. Then we have card base number two for card number two. And this is um, little, the white part of, you know, our dandelions call different names, the white part when they're white and when they're yellow. I don't know. Does anybody know that answer? <laughs> I don't know. I thought they were daffodils. Oh, no. Daffodils are, yeah, these are definitely dandelions. Yeah. But um, I didn't, I don't know if they have different names when, the, you know, they're the seed oh. or the flower. Well, it, it's a, it might be an English thing, but. We call the yellow ones dandelions and we call the white ones clocks. Clocks. 
the clock like you know a tick tock really and then, and then the leaves are called dock dock really? leaves you actually use dock if i don't if america has nettles they're like stinging plants yeah yeah and if they sting you you just look for a dandelion and use the dock leaves and whatever's in them you rub it on and it's like a an automatic antihistamine thing Thank you. You always have fun little tidbits to add, Allison. Thank you. Well, and I just call them dandelions. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, okay. What did, what did you just say about it? Oh, I just, I think I just call them both dandelions. Yeah, that's what I do too. So it just occurred to me that maybe they have two different names. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we only need the clocks. <laughs> this one. <laughs> I'm going with the British on this. Okay. And then we have a sheets of um there's a giant circle and the giant circle is going actually with card number three which we haven't taken that base out yet but put that in your card three five uh pile and then the banner piece goes with card number two okay so that is all we need from these sheets and then we get to card base number three which has the clocks on uh, <laughs> on one side and just pale blue on the other, which is nice. So that's your card base number three. So this is what it looks like so far. You've got we've got our labels and our card bases, and then we get to the fun flowers. So this is um, going to be the background on card number two. So if we're going to use it in its entirety, so that goes to card number two, pile number two, and then you have an acrylic box. Now I have always used acrylic boxes to send, uh, to give cards. And I love that we're gonna be using this and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do our belly band together, but um, we're gonna wrap a belly band around it. And for those of you who may have seen, I did lots of belly bands for the holidays and I just did belly bands on my live yesterday for our little, um, these are the new square pillow boxes. So belly bands are a favorite item of mine. Anyway, so we're going to do that. So let's go ahead and take our acrylic box out, but we're just going to put it to the side for now. We will work on it at the end. And then we have these three gold little dandelions. And this little gold one goes with card number one. I'm checking my list to make sure I get it right. And this is actually the belly band. So this long strip. So go ahead and put that with your box. All right. And then I love this. On these sheets, they have everything we need for all three cards. So just pull out one of these sheets. And I'm going to work with the big one on the left. So starting with the big one, take just separate that out. And that is going to go with card number two. All right. And then you have a curvy one with dandelions. And that curvy one, go, one goes with card number three. And then we have a plain one. And that goes with card number one. Wait, could you slow down, please? Oh, sorry. <laughs> something about a curvy one goes with something. So the curvy one goes with card number three. Number three. Okay. And then the first little one, littler dandelion, that one goes with card number one. And the second little one actually goes with our box. So we're going to go ahead and put that with the belly band. The second one. So there are two of these. One was right side up, one was upside oh, down. Okay. The second one goes with the belly band. And then the last curvy one also goes with card number three. That's it. I just think that they've gotten so smart because they put, they I could take out one sheet and pop out everything we need for all the cards, as opposed to they would have all the ones that were this design on one sheet. And then all the curvy ones on another sheet. That that didn't, I like this way better. <laughs> but that's just me. It could just be me. Okay, and that's all we need. So, so we card, card number three. Yes. Has two curvy ones? Yes. Oh, okay. And that's a circle. Okay, got it. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. 
So we are going to start with our stamp for card number one. And that stamp can be anything you want, of course. But I did wishing you all the best, which is the one that they do um, in the sample. So I'm going to just reposition mine. And we're just going to ink it up. Now, those of you who are using the um, spot when you open it, you're going to use it upside down, right? Because the spot is smaller than the stamp. I like to point that out every once in a while. But if you're like me, using the full-size pad, you can just put it on your block and stamp it forward. So it's going on this, right? This is from card number one. We're going to go ahead and stamp it on. Now, my recommendation is always to stamp on your pa scrap paper first, just in case there are oils or anything on there. But I found that this, I already did that, obviously. Um, but it stamps beautifully. I'm just going to make sure it gets absorbed, mostly because this is a brand new juicy pad for me. So I love that. Always fun to do something brand new. And that's the only stamping we have to do. So really simple. I, that's the other thing I love about these cards is that they're super easy um, and make them easy to work with. So when you're when you're done stamping, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see it. So I'll know that we can go on. Got it, got it. Yep, yep. Just wait one more. Get in there. Yeah, take your time. This is, this is going to be a very quick class. <laughs> Trust me. So, okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. So let's take the rest of the pieces. So if you remember, we have two flowers for card number one. One is gold and one is that we, one that we punched out. So we're going to take our card base and fold it in half. Give it a good crease. Use your scoring bone if you've got one in front of you. Or your fingernail if you don't like me. Why I don't remember that, but and then we're going to just center our um, new label that we just stamped, and they used the four uh, dimensionals, and we're going to place it right in the center of the card. Okay. Love, love, love that little bold accent. This on there. And then when you're ready, we will do the flower, the big, the yellow and green flower. And for this, we want to put the dimensional on the back of the left side. Okay, because we're going to be putting it on over the, the label that's already been dimensional, right? But we want to secure it on the flat. Um, we wouldn't have to, we could do it the way we're going to do the next one, but that's what we're going to do here is use one dimensional on the back of the left side of the flower. So it looks like this. So it looks like it's on the right side, but it's actually on the left when you flip it over, right? Correct? <laughs> left, right, left. Everybody got it? <laughs> it's always confusing. So it goes on the back of the left side of the flower, which when you turn it over is on the right, okay? And then when we put it down, we're putting it so that the dimensional secures to the flat paper, right up to the edge. Okay, so now it sits nicely. But for the gold flower, they used one of the little glue dots that are included in your kit. I'm gonna use my regular stamp and seal for this and just put a little adhesive on the back of the flower itself. So you can see, it's there. Oh. Wow, there it is. Doop, doop. There, a little bit of adhesive. And then it's just gonna go like a little crisscross. Beautiful. And of course, the final touch is our little gems. You're going to pull them out. And let's talk about these gems for a second. We have some gems in the catalog that are like this. For those of you who have them in front of you, you'll see that they are, they have like a little crisscross on them, um, crosshatch. 
if you look closely, they're really hard to see. And I, there's no way I'm going to get it on the camera. Hmm. But I guess they call it faceted. To me, it looks like, well, there you go. It's like crisscross. So very cool. So we have some other things that are like this. Um, but we're just going to put three on and I'm going to do it the way they they did. And uh, that's going to be, they just did them to the right of the flowers. So they put a big one on and then a small one off. And then they put another one down in maybe in between. So you can see, so I have one, two, three. And like I said, I just love these. And just that little hint of blue. It just makes them super pretty. Yeah. So very fun. These aren't available in this color combo, in this blue, just by themselves. Is no, it? no, no. I think they Actually, should. Actually, I think, you know, I meant to look this up. Oh, I can take out my catalog now. That's right. We launched today. Hooray! So let's take a look what we have in the catalog. The new, um, these are fine shimmer. These new purple fine shimmer. They do not have the little cross hatch on them. So let me see. I think it might have just been in previous catalog that we had this style. But let me just see if they're in the main catalog too. I can't keep, keep up. I got to be honest with our little embellishments and I love them all so much. And I just, you know, I always have to double check to see which ones, is anybody here? No, these are, these are gems. Like that, sorry. No, I just think previously we did so, but not, we never had them in that pale blue. Either. Yeah. So a lot of times they just, you know, they do exclusive things with our kits. So yes, they do. it's always fun. All right. Everybody good to move on to the next yeah. one? Great. Okay. So card number two has these pieces. And the one we're stamping on, pull that out, is the, the little uh, banner. And for the banner, they used the, I love this, a thousand good, good luck wishes. Because, of course... You're supposed to blow the dandelion fuzz and or clocks. See, I already forgot. Clocks and make a wish, right? And that's why that goes with it. And you're going to just stamp it right in the middle. There we go. Beautiful. Love it. I, I like the font, the mixed fonts on these. You know how I like that. And just they're very readable so sometimes the script can be a little harder to read but not in this case okay. so we have a thousand good luck wishes and when you're done stamping just give me a thumbs up awesome. yep. yeah so i was really excited to have the catalogs finally launch i've been playing with them for over a month everything that's in there and posting and making reels and go just going crazy right <laughs> and it's fun to be able to you know actually open up the catalog and show it online we're not allowed to do that before the date of uh because stampin up likes to be the ones to do the launch themselves officially we don't want to you know unofficially do it although we are allowed to distribute them physically so it's just online they don't want to be able they don't want that to happen all right so are we good is everybody stamped not quite okay all right I didn't know if i missed a thumbs up or something <laughs> okay awesome okay so let's go with our card very simple we're gonna Fold it in half. It has the clocks all over it. And we are going to take the big card and we're going to be covering up a whole lot of it, which is a little sad, but we'll get over it. And they use, this is where they use the tear and tape. So actually I'll go ahead and use my tear and tape. I know it kind of kills me, but it's okay. I've got so much of it stashed now that I should really start using it. Um, 
So they just put a strip at the top and a strip at the bottom. And that's because this is so strong. And we really use it for strong places where we need really strong things. So it is, maybe they heard that uh, people get frustrated for the regular adhesive when you have to use a lot of those little blue dots. Be a little bit of a pain, little bit of a pain because they, um, you know, they're a little tedious to manage because you got to take off the the protective strip on each little circle, and sometimes they're hard to do. But with the strip, it's a lot easier. You get a lot more real estate covered in one little stripe. And as you can see, I'm using the pointy end of my take your pick tool. Invaluable. And so I just put it at the top and the bottom. No need to use more than that. I probably could have just used a little in each corner and I would have been very happy with that, but I may as well do it the right way for the camera. And there we have it. So that's on the front. I could have also used my regular adhesive for this, which is what I did on my personal, my first set of cards. So once we have that on there, we're going to take that big flower and we're going to put a bunch of dimensionals on the back. When I say a bunch, they used like two up here and two down here. I'm just going to use one and one. Not because I'm porting it, but I, I just don't think it needs it. You really don't need more than this. And again, because this, these dimensionals are super sticky. So, and it just goes right in the middle of the card. Like that. Love it when they have it all done for you, especially when it's gold, because I don't emboss. I don't do heat embossing. <laughs> Those of you who see me often know that. Um, I just don't have the proper setup in my room for embossing, you know, being able to plug in and unplug. And it just it's more trouble than it's worth for me. Um, although it's always very pretty. I love gold, but I love gold paper. I love glimmer paper. I love anything like that. So it just goes right in the middle. Are we good to move on from that? Yes, no? Okay, great. All right, so then we're just going to add our um, banner. And for this, we're going to also use dimensionals, but make sure you put one on each side. Don't put it in the middle because you've already put your flower in the middle. So this is just going to go over the flower that we just put down. And again, it's now all at the same height, sticking out off of the cone. Right in the center at the bottom. Now, whenever I have a straight edge, I like, I usually like to line it up to the edge. They did not do that here. And um, I'm getting over it. <laughs> I think I can live with it, but uh, myself, I would I would have to extend it or just shift it over a little <laughs> for my own personal satisfaction. All right. And once that's on, we're down to gems. So now I have to find my gems again. Here they are. Beautiful gems. This card, they actually used five. And they put... I'll put them on and then I'll bolt it up. But they put three on the left side. So they used a big one and two smalls over here, just making a little triangle itself. And then they extended the triangle by putting a big one and a little one down on the right side of the card. And so still odd numbers and still. Um, did I just use my fingernails? I'm sorry. I should have used my tech, take your pick tool, but when it's a perfect little square like this, I do just tend to use my fingernails. Oops. Anyway, so we've got one, two, three, and then four and five over here. Seems very indulgent after all that gold to then use the five gems instead of just three. But again, I'll get over it. <laughs> they look very pretty. I'm just doing three. Oh, okay. These I'm hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I One of the reasons I have to do it is I end up with a, a whole bunch of these because I hoard them. And then, I don't know, they just pile up. I have a whole box of little pieces. Yep, same. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't use them. So, okay. Are we ready to move on to the last card? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. So for our last one, super easy. We're going to take that giant circle 
Okay, and we are going to stamp right in the middle of it. And this one, you could use any of the sentiments, but they use the Hello Friend, which is going to be nice. And we just put it right in the middle. And this is a nice, generous circle. So you could easily put any of the sentiments, which I love that they are a little bit larger. They take up more real estate. Good. So that's our hello friend, Simuzi. So for this, they actually have us lay it down flat. And again, we can use our tear and tape. This time I'm just using my regular adhesive, but your tear and tape can go at the top and at the bottom, just like so. Top and at the bottom, or on the sides, which is what mine ended up being, doesn't really matter. Um, and you're just centering it. It even has a little circle for you to, to aim for right in the middle. There we have that. Oops, I didn't fold my card. Some people, a lot of people work with their cards open and they get it finished and then they, they fold it at the end. I like to fold mine at the beginning just to make sure I get a nice good crease because sometimes, you know, we pile up the card front, right? <laughs> and there's all kinds of stuff sticking up and I like to make sure I get my good crease. So, all right. Are we good to move on to our flowers yet? Yep. Okay, great. So now we're going to take our flowers. And again, they used, um, they used more, they used three, they put one here and then two down here. I'm just going to use two, one up here and one in the middle here. No need to, to do the ones on the ends and cut them or use to go and get your minis. Not necessary. They just sort of float up. And then this one is going to go on the bottom left of the circle. So what I did was I just aimed my flower to be kind of right next to the hello, the big flower. And that's where the first one will go. Very cute. Makes a nice little wreath. And then the second one, do the same thing, two dimensionals, one in the middle and one at the bottom. We're on the, behind the flowers. And now we're just going and making the rest of the circle, but they don't touch and we want to see the gold. So just make sure that when you put it on, it looks something like that. Okay. They we could have put them a little bit closer, but um, I think, you know, you want to have a little bit of white space and you want to make sure that you can see the gold on there. Oops. And again, this time they used five. I'm only going to use three. I don't know why. It shows five, but I could only find three. So I'm going to use three on mine. And those are the gems. Which I have misplaced yet again. How could that be so fast? So fast. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm just going to use um, a big one. Oops. I, didn't, I never have my lid on. That's crazy. All right. It almost worked even with the lid. Oops. So I'm going to pick up my gem. And I'm going to put one in here. One on a flower, the lower flower. Like so, and then another small one here. And let me just look because when I was doing it earlier, I'm going to use through. Oh, I see. They put two more up on this flower. If you want to do that, I'll do that. Let's see. This was a big one. I used a big one and a small one. They just put one here and another one over here. And there we have it. So super, super easy to make the cards. 
And the idea is that we make all the cards and we put them into a box. Now they don't all fit into the box. They, um, let's talk about these boxes. Do we currently sell acrylic boxes, ladies? Does anybody? I don't, I don't know if we do here. Let's go look. I, we, we did. And I actually buy mine now on Amazon. They're called clear boxes. Um, because we didn't carry them for a long time and then we did and then we didn't. And now I'm just checking to see if we currently do, but I don't think we do. So anyway, you can get these, um, but the, <clears throat> you have to be aware of the differences between them. So let me show you. Um, so the box that we have is about is three quarters of an inch. We're going to measure it. We are going to measure it. We're talking about the depth. So the height is always uh, five and mm, five and five eighths, I think. Where's my ruler? Let me get my ruler. I have a ruler right here. I did. Where did the ruler go? See, I've been cleaning up, Lois. It's not a good thing. Not a good thing. All right, so you can see that the box is five and three quarters inches long. Sometimes it's listed as uh, five eighths. And then the width on this one is um, five eighths, okay? Now, when you work with a box like this, you can only fit in a few cards. I like to put about eight cards in mine. So I usually purchase boxes that are one and a quarter inches deep, okay? So again, this one is five eighths of an inch deep, but you just assemble them. So let's go ahead and do that because we wanna make our belly band. So let's assemble our box and put in the cards that we already made. I have more than you do because I made my samples first to make sure I knew any tricks or whatever. And you wanna put your envelopes in as well. And oops, and for the envelopes, you need to fold them. So let's just use three cards. Okay, the three that you have. <clears throat> and then we'll take our envelopes and we just need to fold, fold over the top, which makes a lovely presentation anyway. So you have them folded. And what I like to do is have, especially if there are pretty envelopes, have the pretty part of the envelopes uh, on one side and then one of the cards on, on the top of the box, uh, of the pile, and then you're gonna put them into your box. So you can see, you really can't get too many more than the three in a box of this size. So if you wanted more, again, they are on Amazon, and we can connect you with that, and they have different depths, and you just have to think about how many cards and envelopes you intend to put in, okay? All right, so. We are gonna close up our box. And I just want us to put our cards inside as well so that we have some substance, something that it can we can work with. And How then, did you work the flaps? Sorry? How did you work the flaps? The little tabby eggs. These tabs? Yeah. They just fold in? It's a box. Oh, okay. It's easier than I thought, okay. Yes, no, it's not complicated at all. Yeah. We just have trouble getting the, <laughs> getting it on top of that envelope. Here we go. Okay. And then move it in the box. And then we're gonna take, when we're ready, you'll see that the um, belly band that they gave to us, Probably, let's see, it's, yep. it's 11 and a half inches long and that allows for overlap, okay? So when you're making a belly band, when I do my bigger boxes, what I do is I, I take a piece and I wrap it all the way around. Um, sometimes if the box is really too big, you might need to connect two pieces of paper to make it longer but you wanna make sure it wraps all the way around. But this is nice and easy. And you'll see that it's scored. Now, when you're making this on your own to figure out the score marks, I just literally fold it and then I come back and score it just so that I get it nice and crisp. But I let it 
I just fold it around and figure out where it is. So here they've already done that for you. Okay, so bend it at the, I'm gonna bend these so that they're nice and crisp. And this is very pretty paper too. Wow. Nice and heavy. Um, and then you're going to, now this, uh, for this box, you don't need it to slide um, off the box so that they can open it. So in other words, you could also do a belly band this way. And obviously this isn't long enough, but they would have to remove the belly band in order to open the box. That's not the case for this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take, this, in this case, I do use tear and tape, just to make sure it stays secure. You can just put some tear and tape on either end. I just put it on this end, I don't know why. Um, might be better on this side. Actually, I'll go and do that too, just to make sure it stays. And if you really wanted to, you could also put some tear and tape right onto the box if you really don't want it to move around at all. But I just let it wrap around. And again, I'm gonna take off my backing. Oh, can I take your pick tool? Oopsie. There we go. And I'm just making sure it's straight. Just gonna go ahead and close it. That's it. Okay. So now that we have that closed. They actually used blue dots. They didn't use the tear and tape. I didn't, didn't think of that. But we're going to go back to the front. And of course, I have it upside down. There we go. Switched it around too many times. But you see how it slides on and off, which is very convenient if you are using it to help secure it. That's what we're not doing in this case. But we're going to take that last flower. Excuse me. Oh, I can bring water today. And we're just going to attach it to the belly band, not to the box, with um, one of the little glue dots. Or in my case, I'm going to just use regular adhesive. You could use tear and tape. You could use the little glue dots they provide. Whatever makes you happy. And they did it all the way to the right. But now you have a lovely little gift box that you can give the beautiful cards that you just made. I love that they did that because it shows you in a very easy way to gift all the cards that you've been making. I'm sure we've all had our um, times that we've gifted our cards. I hope you have because you've worked hard on your cards, right? Um, and there are lots of different ways to do it, but I find this to be pretty much the easiest. Anyway, what do you think? What do you guys think? Great? I just love it. Yeah, I know, right? This is definitely one of my favorite kits that we've done. I agree. Um, I especially like it because there's none of that twine. No little boat <laughs> in the twine. That's always a challenge. <laughs> always a challenge for me. So listen, um, today I know that I've got in my email, let me just flip over here, I got in my email a survey from Stampin' Up. Uh, I don't know if everybody else did, but mm -hmm. wanna, they want feedback on how we liked the kits from um, 2023. So I highly recommend you go in and you answer the survey because that it only makes it better. And we know from experience that they listen because look how much better these kids have gotten over the years. And that's because we keep telling them we want it this way. We want it that way. We need more options, less options, etc. So, you know, they obviously can't please everyone. They never will, but they do. So um, please fill out that and also know that um, if you are a subscriber that subscribes uh, for several months at a time, you could do the three month, or the six month, or the 12 month. The best time to do it is during celebration because if you, um, when you order the six month, you get two celebration items. And if you order the 12 month, you get four. So it really is 
a great time. You're going to order them anyway. And so rather than do it on the monthly basis, if you order them all at once, you get to choose all, from all the beautiful designer series papers, stamp sets, and such that we have available So uh, for celebration. Um, I think I'm going to see most of you at class next week. Lois, will you come to class next week? Or no? Yes, I just, yeah, I am. Oh, okay. I just don't know okay. which one yet. Okay. Yeah, good. And Allison, you're always welcome, but I know you're working. But I do have Saturday morning, so if you wanted to come up. Yes. Those of us who work, Lois, you know. That's right. You do have free time. <laughs> I'll get there. One of these days, I'll be yeah. a lady of leisure. I know. But yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to tell Allison I've started watching your um, your YouTube's. Right. And, oh, thank you. YouTube. you do a great job. I really right? enjoyed it. I, li I like to do it just to listen to her accent. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I know what she's doing. <laughs> but you know, I didn't mention clocks or dock leaves once in my video oh, when I did the, I when I did the live <laughs> because I guess for me that's just what they, I didn't. Nobody questioned the different parts of them. Right. Oh, I missed a, oh, I missed a cultural opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, you might have to make another one. So, Allison, your YouTube channel is Allison Stamps. Allison yeah. with a Y. Allison right. with a Y, yeah. yeah. Allison. So, if anybody wants to check her out, I highly recommend it. Thank um, you. Yeah, absolutely. want to give a shout out anytime I can. We all want to share. Um Okay, so uh, those of you I will see at class. And I do want to talk about, I was told I really because I want my Zoom classes to grow um, because you know anybody can take a Zoom class, right? Uh, I wanted just to make sure that I'm talking about it more or I was told I need to talk about it more. So my Zoom classes are on the fourth uh, Tuesday night of the month. And what in order to get a class kit, you just need to RSVP for the Zoom class um, by the 13th of January. And then I send you a kit um, that has the ingredients for uh, six cards, two each of three designs. And then we have a Zoom class where we make them together, but I also record it just like I do this. And you, I send the link out. So if you can't make the class or don't wanna make the class, that's okay. You can go and see it online. The, the cards are usually pretty simple and they only require sentiments and your own stamps. And uh, usually I try to make it as easy as possible to find a substitute um, if you don't have the stamps that I use. So if anybody's interested, that's $15 um, plus shipping if necessary. Uh, and it's on the fourth Tuesday of the month, which is the 23rd this month. So anyway, that's my little plug. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> you have it. Did you have alternatives? Sorry? Did you have alternatives? Oh, my God, Lois. <laughs> Jeez. That's what I asked you. Oh, did you have great minds? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, I have alternatives to share. So I'm just going over. Let me open the file. And they're all ready in the email to go out. So I was more than ready. I just, oops, that's not what I wanted to open. Oh, that would work, too. You look very placid, Lois. <laughs> like, I don't have a care in the world. I'm very zen. <laughs> very relaxed, for sure. Very, that's what happens when you, when you retire. Got it. Yeah. All right. So let me share my screen and start my start. I'm just going to from beginning and there we go. Gosh, I can't believe I did that. Um, that way. Okay, share screen. That's not what I want. PowerPoint. Okay. Now we got it. Yes, there we go. So from Stamp with Brian, it was Brian King, one of my favorite stampers out there. He made this card. How simple is this? He just cut apart the um, the the second card base. So now you get double the cards. He used only one of the uh, curvy ones that we used on the last card, cut his own circle, added a little crushed curry strip there, and layered it on some other 
cardstock. How beautiful and simple is that, right? So love it. Classic. Perfect. Okay. Go to the next slide. There we go. So this is Cindy Coots. Um, she, uh, I think, is a former design team member. I think I might be wrong. I looked at so many samples this week, uh, but these are the ones that she created. Same idea. I love when she split apart the the DSP. It just gives it a lot of texture. And then this is from the gorgeously gorgeous, the gorgeous, uh, marvelous. Somebody help me here. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Meaningful no. flowers? No, it is. I don't know. You would think that I would know. It is a die from the main catalog. And oh. gorgeously made is the paper that goes with it. Where are my demonstrators? Come on. <laughs> I don't have that one, so I don't know it off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm going to get it. It's going to be here. Jeez Louise. It's just not that hard. Okay. Gorgeously made, actually. The bundle is called Gorgeously Made. That is one of the dies. Love this die. See how it just, you don't need much more than that. It makes a nice, for a nice background and focal point. Okay. And then here they use just one of the curvies and they use the, a label. So I thought that was very nice. That's why I featured it. Cindy Coots. Okay. Dawn Stock goes crazy. Look at her. So she has all these different designs. Um, there are some that are very similar and she cut it. You can see here, this is the envelope, right? These ones down here. She used the envelope. Um, she... Let's say she created her own circles here. She cut them out and then mounted them. They pop, she popped them up. So that gives it a little dimension. Um, and then here she added the gold cards that were available in the uh, ho the holiday catalog, which is now retired. But um, yeah, she did a great job and held all these cards. So that's another person you can look up if you're interested. So the, next ones, on the, the ones on the, oh, well, it's gone. Now, I can go back. Let's see. Don't know how to do that. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry. No, it's okay. Which ones? The ones on the upper right. It says all the best, and it's some kind of a fancy fold. What is that called? Yeah, that's just a, um, it looks like just a, the fun folds where you just score it a little bit differently, and they fold into each other. Uh, what do we call it? Gate fold. It's just a offset gatefold that we knew usually do okay yeah so we've okay. definitely done cards like this i don't know how to do that <laughs> so i can show you that um it's not at this point okay here we have i don't know why i put lorraine's here i must have picked the wrong one because that's our card number four oops all right but lorraine was making cards too okay lynn dunn Linda is one of my favorites. Um, she actually just earned the uh, incentive trip today, I believe. Um, yeah, so she's obviously a big seller, but she does a great job with, I always look for hers when I'm looking for alternative projects. So we have um, these, so all very pretty, just chopping up the paper, you know, chopping up the card bases and adding them to white. Um, and splitting out the little curvy ones, etc. So, this one, of course, is the um, this is the envelope. So she definitely used those as well. Very fun. Okay, love this by Jen Morgano. She has just taken this and made. Oops, sorry. Oops, I did not say that. <laughs> We have the three strips over here to the left side, which makes a great background. Anytime you're looking for just something in the back, um, you know, we always use textured embossing folders, things like that. But this is another great way to, to just add a little bit to make this pop even more. So I thought that was good. Next step, this is very simple. All she did was she took the envelope. She uh, use the same card base. Doesn't even look like she cut it, but you certainly could cut it in half and use um, two sides. And this is the envelope again. And looks like she put some twine just in a circle behind and the gems. 
This is all, uh, most of you made um, cards like this during the Christmas card, the ultimate Christmas card class that I did. This is the faux shutter card. Um, and all sh they did here was they actually, it's just one sheet, it's one card front, right? So the blue is the card front. And then they took the strips of, it looks like black, but it might be green. I can't really tell from the color. And then gold strips to layer them on and make the shutter. So very fun. This is Rachel Testament, also one of my favorite people to look at. And then here's Lorraine Tierney. And she used, she really got a lot. You could get a whole lot of cards out of this, right? Because she took this and broke it out into three pieces. And you could get six of these pieces, right? Out of one card base, because both the front and the back of that card have this design. And she took a, just a plain piece of um, pool party or balmy blue, whichever must be balmy blue. And then this is the envelope. So she did that and added some of our pretty little ribbon and that's it. Mm -hmm. Next we have Robin's Creations. I couldn't find Robin's last name. Sometimes when people create their blogs and such and their Facebook pages and their YouTube channels, they don't actually put their whole name. So this is Robin. Um, and I thought these were you know, a great easy use and she used a lot of uh, the ribbon. So this is the Pebbled Path ribbon. Um, and she put out her own. Awesome. I think that's it. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Very so, good. So, and I will send out the um, the review. Hey, Allison, do you want to hold up? Do you have any handy of your? Um, no. Do you have no, any? No, because I divvied them all out into what they believe. Oh, we lost you again. You went on mute. Sorry, no, say I, I divvied them all out into where they needed to be. I haven't kept them all together. Okay. I was going to say I could see if I could. Um... No, no, no. That's okay. Well, everybody, if you want to, you can go to Allison's YouTube channel and see some alternatives that she made with these cards. So, actually, no, you have to go to my Allison Stamps Facebook page there you because go. The, the, the YouTube has the copy of the live that I did. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at my Allison Stamps Facebook page, it will show you the stills of what I did after that. Okay. Awesome. My live is only the three like we did today, but they, I, 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 it's one of those, oh, I so wish I'd bought two. I know. I know. <laughs> Me too. So, all right. Well, anyway, thank you all for joining. And so far, um, we, yes, at yeah. Sheila. Tomorrow when you post the, send us the alternatives, could you also include that information about the Amazon boxes? Yes, good idea. I will go add that right now. Thank you. Yep. And I'll see if I, I, I'll list the two different sizes that I usually get. So I'll do that. Thank you. Let me, I'm going to do that right away so I don't forget. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye. 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 Bye.